Imbroni Culara. The clearing hadn't been there yesterday. Etain picked her way through flattened Kuvara saplings and into a circle of blackened stubble, following Burhan's steps. The air smelled of smoke and roasted bark. He was swearing fluently. She didn't know much Kilaran, but she knew a curse when she heard one. This is your lot again, Burhan said. He surveyed the field, hands to his brow to block out the sun breaking over the horizon. Now that it was daylight, they could see the extent of the damage from last night's explosion. What am I going to do? What's going to happen to our contract? It wasn't phrased like a question. The Neomordians weren't known to be sympathetic about the host of natural disasters constantly threatening the farming community's precarious existence, but this was no natural disaster. The blast area spanned around 500 meters, and the crater at the center was 12, maybe 15 meters wide. Etain didn't know how deep it was, but a Trandoshan and an Ubisi were standing at the edge of it, peering down, blasters in hand, looking as if they were searching in the soil. They didn't take the slightest notice of her or Burhan. She must have looked suitably starved and dowdy, rough enough to pass for a farm girl. It was probably too late to convince them the crater was caused by a meteor fragment. But at this point, Etain didn't know any more than they did. Why do you think it's my lot? She asked. Obvious, Burhan said sourly. I seen lots of spaders and freighters and sprayers come down hard, but they don't leave craters. They falls apart and burns, yes, but they don't blow up half the countryside. This is off-planet. It's soldiers. He kicked around some of the charred and blackened stalks. Can't you have your fight on someone else's planet? Don't you think I got enough problems? She wondered for a moment if he was considering turning her in to Hogan's men for a few credits to make up for the loss of the precious bark. She was already an extra mouth to feed at a time when money he was counting on had just gone up in a fireball with much of his crop. It was time to find somewhere else to hide, and some other plan for getting that information off Kilara. Etain was still considering the scorched land when the UBC and the Trandoshan jerked upright and turned to jog away toward the dirt track beside the field. The UBC had one hand pressed to the side of his helmet, as if he was listening to something, a comlink, probably. Whatever the summons had been, it had been urgent enough to get them running. It also confirmed that this wasn't just a Narsh sprayer making an all-too-frequent crash landing. Etain waited a moment longer, then walked forward to peer into the pit to see what had so engrossed them. It had been a monstrous blast. The sides of the blackened crater were blown almost smooth, and there was debris everywhere. It was an enormous blast area for a small craft. She left Burhan and walked around inspecting the ground as Hokan's men had done, not sure what she was seeking. She was almost at the Kuvara orchard before she saw it. The early sunlight caught a scraped metal edge of something embedded in the ground, rammed deep by the explosion. Etain crouched down as casually as she could and worked the soil loose from it with her fingers. It took her a few minutes to expose enough to understand the shape and a few more to work out why the scorched colors were so familiar. It was distorted, the metal frozen in a moment of being torn apart by enormous force, but she was pretty sure she'd seen one intact before. It was a plate from an R5 astromech droid, a plate with Republic markings. They're coming. Whoever they were, she hoped they'd made it alive. <laughs>